Hello, friends, and welcome to the Church at Lion of Judah Sunday, February 18th service. This week, Pastor Matthew Hartman brings us this inspiring message titled, The Power of Continual Prayer. Thanks so much for joining us online, but how about coming to join us next week? We're at 5732 Douglas Road in Toledo, Ohio. Service times are Sunday, 1030 a.m. and Friday at 7 p.m. Like to partner with us in support of the ministry and world outreach? Drop in at www.lionofjudatoledo.org and click the donate button. Thanks for being with us today. Now on to the message. So, as I shared Friday night, who in here is born again? I'm going to ask that question. Many hands go up. Almost all of them in the room. So, those of you that raise your hands, you know you're a priest. You're a priest of the Lord, right? You know that? If you don't know that, you know that now, because I'm telling you. It's in the Bible. We go through many scriptures. But you, so you've been called to the priesthood of the Lord, uh, you know, and it's our job, as we read in Leviticus, if you wouldn't mind standing for the word and, and honor the word, if you're able. So the reason why Leviticus is called Leviticus is because it's after, it's, it's, it's the, the priesthood, the Levitical priesthood, and the Leviticus, the book of Leviticus, is the instructions and the guide for the priesthood it tells the priests how to be priests so if you aren't familiar with Leviticus I would encourage you to peel the pages apart because they're probably new and crispy in most of our Bibles and get in the, get in that book a little bit right and ask the Holy Spirit to give you revelation it's not as scary as you think it would be it's full of good stuff full of revelation and it's full of not that we're under the law but the law is good the law is a revelation of God and it teaches us how we can have relationship with God not that we are righteous by the law no flesh was made righteous by the law none but it is beautiful and important and will train us and teach us how to have an intimate relationship with the Lord so Leviticus is an important book and you should get into it with this as priests, you have been commissioned, it says, to keep the fire burning on the altar. The fire on the altar shall be kept burning on it. It shall not go out, but the priest shall burn wood on it every morning. Now pause there. You know, we, we talk and teach and preach often about the first fruits of your day. Some of us get up early in the morning. Emmanuel, he knows he stayed at my house. I have a whole day before him or my wife gets up. I've already had a day of spending time with the Lord and reading and praying and sitting before the Lord, listening to worship music, singing, all whatever, right? So the priests and each one of you that are born again have agreed that you're priests, your duty is to get up, maybe it's not in the morning, maybe it's at whenever, and throw logs on the fire. Get it burning because it's, it's smoldering embers right now when you wake up in the morning and you have to kindle that fire. You have to fan it in flames. So every morning, get up and throw some wood on it. And he shall lay out the burnt offering on it. Lord, I'm here. I'm all yours. I'm your sacrifice. Lord, you said if I, if I would be the sacrifice, you'd send the fire, right? Let him send the fire on you. And offer up in smoke the fat portions of the peace offerings on it. God, let me be in your peace today. Fire shall be kept burning continually on the altar. It is not to go out. That's your commission as priests of the Lord is to keep the fire burning on the altar. And that's where, where our prayer is that we keep the fire burning on the altar of the key of David. It is a place of altar and sacrifice until Yeshua returns. Imagine being the person sitting in that room when Jesus splits the sky. I imagine he's going to kiss you on the cheek. Please be seated. He's going to be like, wow, you're so faithful. You've been here keeping the fire burning on the altar. But as you do this, as we continue, and if, as, we, as we train ourselves to be in continual prayer, there's a blessing for you and a blessing for me as we do that. I mean, Rabbi, he kind of stole my thunder in the seeds of revelation a little bit, uh, you know, so I'm going to do my best. But we go on here. Listen, listen, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplications, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses comprehension, 
will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Stop being anxious. Stop being worried. And I know it's not easy, but if we continue in communication with the Father and continue to thank Him and can continue to tell Him the hard things that we're dealing with, the struggles, the things we're wrestling with, the pain that we're feeling. I mean, we can, we can let Him into those spaces and places. We don't have to try to hide them because He can see them anyways. But as we share these things with Him and the good stuff, we can't forget when things are going really good to, to talk to Him as well. We don't just need to be backed into the corner to talk to the Lord and tell Him, Father, I thank You. I thank You. You know, I shared, like, I'll be cooking, and I'm just thanking the Lord for this beautiful red bell pepper. Thank You when the jalapenos are hot. Thank You, you know, for this amazing chicken. And thank You, you know, I mean, I heard it. The, the meal last night was awesome, right? Thank You, Father, for those spectacular green beans. I don't even like green beans, but those were amazing. You know, so when things are good, we let him know. We thank him. We, we make our requests known and we pray to him and we talk to him all the time and we thank him. And when we do that, the God who gives peace that surpasses understanding when it doesn't make sense to have peace shields and guards your heart and your mind. Whereas anxiety is in your mind. Fear, anxiety, worry. It's all in your mind and your thoughts. How often has something caused us anxiety and we get to that moment and it's not even what we thought it was. It wasn't even as bad as we thought it was. It didn't, it didn't turn out like we thought it was going to turn out. It was okay, right? Well, God will put you in peace. He'll shield and guard your hearts and mind in peace. And that is the power of continual prayer. We continue to pray to the Father. And listen, I know it sounds like a big daunting task, but you can do it. And it's easier than what you think. I think oftentimes we think prayer is something that it's not. Prayer isn't just, you know, all the time talking. Prayer is the slightest turn of your affection and your attention of your heart to the Lord. He's the one who, he, you know, we see the outward appearance of man. He searches the hearts of men and women. He knows your heart. He knows what's in there. And if you just turn it towards him, he's, he's already there. And you'll see that he's already there. And it just allows him to open up and protect you and put release a blessing over you. Continual prayer is a key to being in peace and living a life free of anxiety. Always talking to the Father. How do we always talk to the Father? How do we pray continually? Sometimes it's praying with our voice. Sometimes our thoughts are going crazy and they're going all over the place and we need to open up our mouth and begin to thank Him or begin to make our requests known with our voice. Right? So we can get our hearts, our minds lined up straight. But it's not always praying with your mouth. But it is praying with your mouth, right? I love what David said. He said, I cry aloud with my voice to the Lord. I make supplications with my voice to the Lord. I pour out my complaint before him. I declare my trouble before him with his voice. But here's a beautiful thing about the scripture too. David, God said about David himself, he is a man after my own heart. And David said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pour my complaint out before the Lord. And some of us are trying to like, talk to God like, like we're not hurting. We're trying to hide and mask those places and spaces from God. We're afraid of complaining to God. It's not complaining to God. It's complaining when you call up your friend and complain about life. When you lift up your hardships and your hard, you know, the, your struggles and your trials to God, it's not complaining. It's going to a loving Father and sharing your difficulties with Him and allowing Him to work in those places. When you pick up the phone and call your friend, they can't help you really. Then you're just complaining. When you're having an issue with somebody and you pick up the phone and you complain about them and gossip about them, it's complaining and gossiping. When you go to the Father and say, Lord, this 
person, this situation, this relationship is causing me hardship, it's causing me trouble. It's not gossip and complaining. It's taking this issue to the Father and allowing Him the space and place to bring you out of anxiety, to bring you out of fear, to give you solutions to the problem, to work in their life, whatever needs to be done. So it's not complaining. And again, sometimes it's speaking with your voice to the Father, but it's also the most intimate parts of your heart. Just letting Him into those places. Letting Him come inside to those deep wounded marks in your heart and allowing Him to heal them. If you can't even uh, uh, express those hardships to God, that he can't come into the, you know, he, you're, you're guarding, you're, you're shielding your heart from him. And it says, lift up your prayer and supplications, cry out to him with thanksgiving and, and allow him to come in and shield and guard your hearts and minds in Jesus. When you're not, like, Lord, I'm struggling, I'm struggling with thoughts of lust. I'm struggling with jealousy. God, I'm envying this person. God, help me. Like, you can, you can say those things to God, and it's okay. You don't have to act like they're not happening. You guys hear me? I know there's some of you in there, you're trying to hide stuff from the Lord like He doesn't know. You can talk to Him about those things and allow Him to come in. Listen, He knows your heart. Again, turn your heart. So it could be speaking with your mouth. It could be praying with your heart. I love this portion of Scripture. This is Jesus. You know, they come to Jesus. Hey, Lazarus is sick. He's going he's gonna to die. And, La and Jesus waits. He waits extra time. He knows that Lazarus is going to die. And he waits an extended amount of time to make sure that he's good and dead. So that when he goes and raises him from the grave, people know, I am. I am he. I am the creator. I am God who raises the dead. Right? So he waits. So Jesus, again, being deeply moved within, came to the tomb, right? Martha and everybody's running up. They're all weeping. They're all crying. They lost this beloved brother, lost this beloved friend, and they're crying. And Jesus is moved by their pain, by our hurt. He's moved by that. And he comes to the tomb, and now it was, now, now it was a cave, and a stone was laying against it. And Jesus said, remove the stone. Martha, the sister of the deceased, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead for four days. Like, he's dead, Jesus. You're too late. There's nothing you can do now, right? And Jesus said to her, Did I not say that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they removed the stone. Then Jesus raised his eyes and said to the Father, I thank you that you have heard me, I knew that you always hear me, but because of the people standing around, I said it out loud so that they may believe that you sent me. Jesus knew that he didn't have to speak out loud. He knew that God heard his heart. He knew that he didn't have to say it out loud, but to show those around him that, he, that, that, God, that God, that the Father heard him and moved, he spoke it out loud. And it's the same for you and me. You don't have to speak it out loud. Just, and that's the beauty of the key of David, of sitting in that place and that space and connecting your heart to God and, and knowing that He's answering your heart. He's answering your prayers. How many times have you just thought something? You never even said it out loud. You thought about a person. You're like, man, I haven't heard from Sally in a while. And then Sally calls you. I haven't heard from Jim in a while. I wonder what's happening. And then you walk into the dollar store and there's Jim. How many times have us, does that happen to us? You know that's God answering your prayer, hearing your heart, and He's moving and He's answering your prayer. But sometimes I think we minimize it. Sometimes we don't understand the power of continual prayer. That is continual prayer. And when we understand that in a greater measure, if you believe and you know that God hears you, you'll talk to Him. If you don't believe that God hears you, you won't talk to Him. If my wife keeps trying to talk to me and I don't listen, or I don't, you know, she, she's eventually going to stop talking to me, right? Because she believes that I'm not, I don't hear her. 
But if I hear her and I respond to what she's saying, God is responding to us. And I think sometimes we're not paying attention. We continually pray and we will overcome anxiety and every, every hardship and fear in our life. And continually praying, sometimes it's praying with our mouth. Sometimes again, it's just a move of our heart. I was early in my walk with the Lord and I, and I got the sitting, you know, I, I got the first fruits of the day. I was watching Discovering the Jewish Jesus again as I shared, like, the Lord used Rabbi Schneider's television ministry to bring me in relationship with Jesus. I'm watching one of the first episodes I've been watching. Rabbi gets on his knee on the episode and says, will you make, the, will, will you, uh, make this uh, um, covenant with the Lord right now to give him the first fruits of your day? Will you, will you get up if it's five minutes or 15 minutes and pray to the Lord and get in your Bible? Will you make that covenant with the Lord right now? And I said, yes. And I've done it every day since then. And it's been a blessing. So I got it. But I was young and immature, and I thought what praying was was talking out loud. So I'm, I, eventually I'm, I'm sitting, uh, and now I'm, I'm coming to this church, and I'm working at Discover the Jewish Jesus, and I'm sitting with a, a mature saint in the Lord, a sister, and I didn't express this to her, but I'd been feeling like not speaking so much when I was in my prayer time in the morning and just sitting and being quiet before God. And then as I began, began to do that, I, I was feeling condemned. I was feeling like I'm just being lazy. And I was wrestling and I was praying and asking God, am I just being lazy, Lord? You know, am I just being complacent? And then he used this person to tell me, out of nowhere, we're talking about something out here in left field. She says, you know, sometimes God just wants us to sit quietly before him. And it was like, bam, wow. God, you hear my prayer. And I don't have to just say it out loud. You hear me. You know my heart. He hears you guys. He knows your heart. And that's, uh, that's like... That's how we can pray continually. Because you can't pray continually with your mouth. When I sit up here and I talk for 40 minutes, if it's 40 minutes, my mouth is very dry. And I have to take many drinks of water, right? But you can pray continually with your mouth, with your heart, with your mind. I love what Paul says, right? I will pray in the Spirit, and I will pray in understanding. I will pray in the Spirit, and I will pray in understanding. You can pray with your mouth. You can pray with your heart. You can pray in your prayer language if you have a prayer language. Right? You don't even have to pray with your prayer language aloud so anybody can hear you. You can do it quietly to yourself. After all, it's just between you and God when it's your prayer language, right? And that's how we pray continuously is with our hearts with our minds. And again, if we don't get up and give Him the first fruits of our day, if we don't still ourselves and sit and train ourselves to connect with Him, you know, it's like getting a ship to move. It's so hard to get a ship to take off. Getting, getting a fire started from nothing is so much more, uh, it takes so much more energy to get a fire started from nothing than to wake up in the morning and throw a log on it like Leviticus tells the priest to do. If you get up in the morning and throw a log on an already existing ember that's smoldering that could go out if you leave it alone, man, it'll ignite into a full fire. So we've got to give our first time, our first fruits of the day. We've got to practice on connecting our hearts to the Lord. But again, praying continually is easier then you might think it's giving, maybe praying with your mouth and praying with your heart and letting him into every deep and intimate space and place. And listen, I want you to know that he hears you. Don't forget those little moments where he breaks in and does something special in your life. Write it down. Take a picture of that moment, whatever it is, right? Like God told Joshua as they crossed over into the promised land to to have the priests pick up stones, 12 of them, and build a memorial stone to remember the day that God delivered Israel into the promised land across the Jordan. And we need to do the same thing in our life. I have my, some of you have seen my silver Kia that I drive. The thing is beat up. 
It's been hit by, it's been crashed pretty hard more than once. It's been hit by the semi truck. The whole side of it is ugly. I love that car. You know why I love that car? Every time that it's been hit hard, the Lord has used it to do something to move me into another place in my, in my life, in my ministry, in my relationship with Him. The first time it got hit hard, I got moved from driving, you know, I, I had left painting cars, making a really great salary. Tavis and I live in our beautiful home in Temperance. Got smashed, and the, the Lord spoke to me and told me to leave that job. So I'm driving Uber, and I get smashed, our only car. And then the Lord uses that moment to move me into working for Rabbi Schneider at Discover the Jewish Jesus. I'm telling the Lord, Lord, I'd really like this car to be paid off. It would be great. We had a payment on it. And then I got smacked by a semi-truck. And the Lord used that to pay off the car. It was a beautiful, hey, we drove away. I went to work that day. Tabitha couldn't believe that we didn't take the day off. I was like, why would we? We're fine. We stopped at Tim Hortons. We got a, a medium double-double and drove on into work. Like, why not? It was great. And I still drive that car. And I leave the smashed up sign on it because it's a memorial stone to me. Because I know what God did. I can walk out of my door and it's ugly. But it's like, man, you used that moment. We were screaming. We thought, it's a semi-truck. He clipped us and we see his light. It was scary on the freeway, right? But he used that moment. So we, gotta, we have to mark these moments in time, you know, we have to create memorial stones because again when we believe that he hears us we'll talk to God if you believe that he hears your heart you'll know that you don't have to speak your prayer that you can just sit before him and just let him in and you'll do it you'll be motivated like the God of the universe hears me and he talks to me and he speaks to me. I just want to, last thing I want to address, the God of the universe speaks to you. He said, come to me. He said, speak to me, and I will tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. Another part of being, stilling ourselves in prayer, another part of the beauty of the prayer room, of the key of David and the training that happens there that you can take into your own home uh, and sitting quietly before him is being able to listen and hear him talk to you because prayer is communication and it's not always just you talking allow him space to answer you continual prayer it, it, there's power in continual prayer it will free and deliver you from anxiety fear and worry again Make your requests known to God who gives peace that surpasses understanding and he will shield and guard your hearts and minds in peace. Talk to him. Believe that he's going to answer you. Let him into the deep intimate spaces of your heart and watch him give you peace that doesn't make sense to the world. Amen.